Hey guys! So, you can probably tell I've just been doing yoga, so I look like this. Hey guys! Happy New Year! So, I've been writing a story time video and I've been a little bit stuck with it and honestly that was going to be my next video but I've been postponing it and now I have a new story time story to tell you because unfortunately my life is full of drama and bad shit happens all the time. Oh by the way you'll see that I've changed my get up so now I have Lucifer and Kevin signed posters of, of, of Mark and Osric. So obviously I'm in the Supernatural fandom but I'm still in the fandom so don't think I'm not. I just have other things here than Dan and Phil and you can at least see me properly now because I don't have loads of mess behind me it's all white. You might be thinking this is going to be one of these clickbaity story time videos where it's like I got abducted by aliens and you click and they didn't actually get abducted by aliens but this is true I... alright cat. I don't know what he's doing over there this one's true, I did get assaulted unfortunately on New Year's Eve at GAY in Soho by a member of staff and I just wanted to talk to you about this now obviously this story has assault in it so if you're triggered by assault, physical assault or whatever don't watch it but or do whatever you want to be honest but that's just a warning but I'm gonna try and make it light-hearted and stuff because that's what I do so I was actually assaulted by bouncers 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 <sighs> now if you are not of age or if you haven't been clubbing or whatever Bouncers can tend to be like that one teacher at school that just doesn't like you. There's sometimes one or two bouncers, or all the bouncers, who have that attitude of that teacher who just doesn't like you, who just has it in for you, or has it in for the world. Except unlike your teachers at secondary school, the bouncers can legally beat you to the ground for little or no reason at all. I'm sorry if I've just given loads of you anxiety over that. We were on the dance floor, as you can imagine, in a club, and a couple of guys in the middle of the floor started to have a dance off. I'm not sure if they knew each other or not. They weren't really dancing against each other, they were more dancing with each other and it was really good. And we all formed a circle around uh, the boys and we were watching them dance. Now, you can imagine that in a club, dancing is not uh, Pikachu. He found my tutu. He loves tutus and petticoats. Boy, stop. Now, as you can imagine, dancing, if you're in a club, is nothing out of the ordinary. It's kind of what you expect to happen in a club. And although these guys were sometimes like they'd kiss at the end of a dance or something and it was really cute, there was nothing like obscene or sexual going on. There was nothing that wasn't appropriate. It was just a dance and some people were cheering and it was just some innocent fun. <laughs> so that's how it went down. And despite the fact that everything was very innocent and no one was misbehaving, a member of staff came in and infiltrated the circle and shouted at everyone to go back to normal and everyone sort of begrudgingly broke up the circle and broke up the dance off and just went back to your usual club dancing from one foot to the other because she did not she was not having any of it this member of staff is often known as the very small very grumpy female bouncer at gay anyone who goes to GAY, a lot of you will know who that is immediately and be like, oh god, yes. Um, that's who it was. The small and kind of grumpy uh, member of staff. She broke it up and she said that we couldn't um, do that and we had to go back to normal, which was honestly quite like she was the teacher and we were the children. It didn't feel like we were there to have fun. It felt like we were there to work or something. It was really weird because like I said, everyone was just dancing and this member of staff was having none of it and marched right in and told us to go back to normal. So at that point, there was a girl couple beside me and they started shouting out at the member of staff, not in an overly 
aggressive way, they weren't swearing, but they were shouting, jealous, jealous. Because I guess the guys were having a lot of fun together and kissing, and I guess these girls thought that she was jealous because of that. I don't know if that's why she broke up the dance off. She probably just wants to be a grumpy pants, but that's what they said. They said that she was jealous and I sort of laughed a little bit, but I didn't really say anything. And at that point, she just turned. She came right up to me and started asking if I wanted to leave. Now, obviously I hadn't actually done anything uh, and I didn't want to leave. And she didn't really say anything to the girls who were shouting at her. She was just like shouting at me and asking if I wanted to leave. So obviously I said, no, no thank you, I don't want to leave. And she wouldn't stop there, she kept shouting at me, getting very aggressive, telling me to go back to normal. And normal is not something I've ever been. <laughs> and I said, what do you mean, go back to normal? And she said, stop being in a ring which made no sense because the ring had dispersed, everyone had gone off their separate ways. I was not in a ring, everyone had gone and it was just literally me standing there. If she wanted to shout at me for being in a ring, I was no longer in a ring. So I was being as calm as I could and I was trying to de-escalate the situation. So I was like not raising my voice, using a calm voice and everything I said was making it worse. She just decided, I mean, she's seen me around there before she decided she didn't like me and I guess she just wanted me out. There was nothing I could have said. I could have been the sweetest person and she would have, you know, taken offence to something I'd said or seen it as back chat or whatever. I just decided talking to her wasn't helping and I was going to kind of politely excuse myself without turning my back on her or blanking her or anything, just politely get away from the situation. So I said, no, sorry, I, I don't want to leave. And I started moving away to where some guys were and like dancing with them. My friend was actually in the toilet. He'd just like gone at this point in time. So he missed what happened. And I just danced up to these guys and like I was gonna start chatting to them because like you can do that there. It wouldn't be weird. And she started pursuing me at which point an older guy turned around and started shouting at her because like, he could see that she was pursuing me and being really horrible and obviously him shouting at her isn't going to help the situation but he was like older and saw me as like a young girl being attacked basically and I guess he just didn't want me to get hurt so he started shouting at her at which point I told him not to do that and the next thing I know I'd been grabbed, spun around and was face down on the floor doing my best yoga upward bow position, but uh, in a slightly less dignified way. I was now facing into a booth, there's like a seating area where my handbag was, because people were sitting there and like, it was fine, it was safe there. Uh, my handbag was in there and my coat was in there, and I, I do not know how this woman is so strong. She's very small, but she's very strong. And I wasn't like particularly drunk even, I'd had a drink, but I wasn't like, you know, it's wobbly and easy to take down, but I was just face down on the floor. And she said that she was going to kick me out. At which point I told her that I was not leaving without my coat and bag. Which, even if I'd been misbehaving, there's no reason I can't have my coat and bag. It's very cold outside, I need my coat, and if I'm going to get home I need my bag. It has my bank card, my oyster card, it has my keys. It has my money, it has everything I would need to get home. And also, you know, I don't really want to leave all my possessions in the club to get stolen. They're not going to still be there the next day if I leave my bank card. I mean, I'd, let, I'd turn my back on it, but I wasn't going to leave it all night. I was not going to leave without my bag. Now, there were two people in this booth. There was a drag queen and a guy with fancy clothes. Welcome to the gay scene. So they were sitting there watching this and... I was just begging for my coat and bag and the woman did not care. She would have me on the street with no warm clothes, no money. She didn't care if I got abducted. She just wanted me out. I started screaming at these two people to pass me my handbag. Pass me my coat and bag, please. And they just sat there and ignored me. <coughs> Thanks, guys. At which point the woman shouted one word that I really did not need to hear today. Security! And suddenly 
all I can feel is all these hands grab me and crush me into the ground. I don't know if there were two more people, I don't know if there were five more people, they were behind me, the people in the booth had no interest in passing me my handbag, the guy was this far from it, he could have very easily passed it over or passed it to one of the guards to give me, the guard would have probably stolen it to be honest. The guard had no interest, the bouncers had no interest in giving me my possessions or making sure I was safe. My friend was in the toilet, so he would come back and I would be gone. And they, they had no interest in listening to me, she just said the magic word and that was it. They crushed me to the ground. If you watch me, you probably know that I suffer with anxiety, so my heart rate was pounding. I was completely like my arms and legs were shaken and I was feeling very wobbly and sweaty. You can imagine how attractive I must have looked. And the next thing I know I'm being pushed through the doors and into the street where there's obviously a crowd of people either queuing up or smoking. So obviously everyone thinks at this point that I'm some kind of violent thug who started a fight in the club because um, I'm being pushed out the doors. They opened the barricade and just shut me on the other side. I had my mobile phone in my hand, luckily, because I'm addicted to my mobile phone, but all my other possessions were inside. I had no way of getting home, I had no way of getting back in. They obviously wouldn't let me back in even if I had my ID, but that, my passport, was obviously in my bag. And obviously they weren't going to let me back in to get my stuff, and I'd just been shut out of the barricade in the cold. Now, I have social anxiety and everyone's now staring at me thinking I'm some kind of violent criminal. So I, as you can imagine, was in a state of pure panic and was trying to ring my friend to get him to bring me my handbag. Now, if you've ever been there, you'll know that there's barely any signal ever inside. You can't tweet, you can't send a text, you can't ring your friends. People usually go outside or go to stand in the porch area to use their phones. This day was no exception, so I'm now shaking and explaining to people that I've actually been assaulted and I'm not some kind of football hooligan or something. And I'm shaking, trying to ring my friend, telling the people outside that I needed to contact my friends, that all my stuff was inside, that I had no way of getting home and that I was very scared and the members of staff dealt with this situation by coming back out, watching me and taking pictures of me on their mobile phones. So I now know that even if I wanted to go back to GAY I wouldn't be able to because they have pictures of me and they're going to use those to not let me back in. So eventually, after a while of kind of trying to control my shaking and my heartbeat and trying to use my phone to get my friend, I see somebody come out of the club. It was the guy in the fancy clothes. The guy who wouldn't bring me my handbag, he was standing there with my handbag looking for me. Now the bouncers could see what he was doing and they were actually trying to stop him. I don't know if they thought he was stealing the bag or if they knew that it was mine and they didn't want me to have it, but they were trying to stop him from passing the bag out. And he was looking for me and I was like, it's me, it's me, it's my bag. And the bouncers let him pass it to me. Now I don't know if when I asked for my bag in the first place, he was just too drunk to understand what was going on. Or maybe, I don't know, he doesn't understand English. And the fact I was screaming for my bag and waving my arms and trying to reach for my bag, um, maybe he just didn't understand, I don't know. I don't know what the situation was, but eventually he brought me my bag, which is the main thing. So whatever his reasoning was, at this point in time, I was extremely grateful. So I had my stuff, still didn't have my friend, still didn't have my coat, but eventually he came out and he obviously knew what happened, someone had told him, and I sent him to get my coat so we could actually leave. <sighs> so I finally had my friend, my stuff, my coat, everything, and I was just ready to go. The woman was actually standing very close to me on the other side of the barricade. I don't know if she thought I was ready to punch the crowd in the face and she thought she had to be there for crowd control or something, but you know, probably not. She probably just wanted to hang around me like a bad smell and not leave me alone. So he decided we would just gracefully retreat without any other word, being the bigger people and taking the moral high ground. Come on Anthony, let's go to the lesbian bar where I won't get assaulted by a midget. Well, almost. 
I've obviously written a letter of complaint to the company outlining everything that happened and I'm also reporting it to the police today. I thought I'd make this video first because I like to procrastinate. That's what happened. We went home feeling very angry and disappointed and it was a really horrible start to the year. I don't want to be one of those people who's like, oh 2017 is obviously going to be horrible because really that was during the first four hours of 2016, 2017. Yeah, I'm not going to decide, I'm going to write off the whole year because of one thing that happened, but it was very disappointing and it was just horrible. Unless you've been acting violently, no one deserves to be treated in the way that I was treated and even if I was, I don't deserve to be thrown out without any of my stuff and I really don't want to be stranded in the middle of London as a young woman on my own. I also have some fingernail marks on me and stuff so I'm gonna include that in my physical assault police um police report so hopefully this situation gets sorted out and she gets stopped from treating people like that ever again because i think a lot of these people just get a job like that because they can be mean and most bouncers do a really good job but unfortunately there are some who ruin it for everyone and we don't want bullies in this world you don't go out to have fun at a club to get bullied by someone so hopefully the police and the company sort the situation out and i will hopefully find another gay bar that i can go to where i won't get physically attacked i hope you enjoyed that story and i hope that we all have a lovely 2017 wherever you are have a really good day and subscribe if you want to see more videos and click the bell because apparently you have to click the bell now i don't know do what you want have a nice evening My cat is giving me a very strange look. It's in my mouth, it's on my lip gloss. Blah. A man in... Pfft. That would be bad continuity.